stopped yesterday. Say, we start with technical application or day-to-day -day life application of Bernoulli's principle. And also we try to explain what all we have given as the examples that is standing beside in uh, besides the platform or at the edge of the platform in the railway station are two balloons attracting each other or uh, once you blow the air all these things we learn to like explain using by Bernoulli's theorem and also we learn what is called as Magnus effect and all those things now first of all we think of what is called as atomizer say atomizer atomizer means a sprayer nothing more than that how it works it is working on principle of bernoulli's theorem say so first of all we write down the bernoulli's theorem by taking the potential energy same we write half rho v square and then P is equal to constant as we have taken the potential energy at same height. So it is constant, don't bother. Using this idea, we will explain many concepts now. Observe carefully. Automizer, it means it is a spray. Yeah. How it works? We learn. Just observe. This is a very sprayer. In its simplest form, have a nozzle, have a long pipe, and there's another pipe attached perpendicular to like this, perpendicular like this, and then this whole thing is kept in a container, in say like this. And we have a liquid filled in this, and there is a piston attached at this point. This is the set of atomizer. Or if you have, say, vacuum cleaners in your house, that vacuum cleaner comes with a attachment, a lid, a container, which can be attached to spray the water or something like that. You can see that if you have, a, a, say, vacuum cleaner, there also we have same idea. How it works now? We start from this from this equation. We can explain the work. Observe when we push the piston in in the vacuum cleaners, we blow the air. When the air rushes through this, the speed of air is more here. V is large at this point. Once V is large, observe according to this equation, if V becomes larger. To keep the right hand side constant, P should decrease because rho is constant. Don't bother about it. As V becomes larger, P should decrease. That means at this point, the P decreases. Once the pressure decreases here, that part of the tube attached to this point is inside the liquid. Here the pressure is air pressure, that is atmosphere pressure. Therefore, here pressure is more and here is pressure is less. Therefore, that pushes the liquid here because of the pressure difference and that liquid once it enters, uh, rises up to this level and enters here, it gets mixed with the air and starts getting sprayed as droplets there. So this is the basic working of atomizer. So let me explain it once again using this idea, looking at this equation, say, if V increases to keep right hand side constant, P should decrease. If V decreases to keep right hand side constant, P should increase. Like that. Just observe the situation now. Let me explain it once. Once we push the piston in, the air rushes through this pipe. Once air rushes through this pipe, the speed of air increases there. V increases. Once speed increases, say, observe here, the pressure according to this equation, as V increases, P should decrease, so P decreases. Once pressure decreases here, it is atmosphere pressure here, so that 
is more than this and it pushes the liquid up inside the column. Inside the column. So once it pushes it up, so once it comes to this tube, main tube, that liquid gets mixed with the air and it is sprayed as drops. This is one of the ideas. And in fact, in two wheelers, petrol is mixed with the air for the combustion by using a device in the engine called as carburetor. In the carburetor, we make use of Bernoulli's theorem to spray the petrol with the air to create a fuel mixture. So thereby it can burn in the engine. So carburetor is another application of Bernoulli's theorem where we spray again. But there's slightly different technique is used, but Bernoulli's principle is behind. Once we learn this atomizer, mm, Prajal Kaudini asking me, if we pull the piston back, what will happen? That's a nice question to think of. Once, the, once you pull the piston back, the air rushes from this side. Then it gets mixed there. It may condense or it may, those, that liquid again come over here. That's all. But it cannot be spread because it is not coming out. It gets mixed with the air and it stays in this column. Or finally, it may drip back to the bottle itself. Okay, that's the idea. Now, with these things now, we learn to explain why the balloons come nearer to each other when we blow air between the two balloons, inflated balloons, or why we are not asked to stand very near to the platform edge in a railway station when the train moving very fast there. We have to explain. We can explain it by very easily from this. I don't know what is that effect, uh, what you are saying, Prajwal, but uh, we think of like this, just observe. Say, when this is the platform, you are standing very near to the and the train passes besides you. This is the train wheel there, there, there's a floor there. When train rushes through, like this, out of the board, like this, towards outside, then there is the air column present here. That air is also dragged along with the train. Once the air is dragged, the velocity here rises up for the air. And once velocity rises up there, the pressure according to this equation decreases. Once pressure decreases, here in between you and the train, but the pressure is larger, atmosphere pressure is there, therefore, there's all chance of you being pulled towards the train. That's why one must not stand very near to the edge when train is coming. Because of that, you may be pushed towards the train and you may end, end up with the accident there. So that is one idea. Now we come back for the balloon case. We think, think of two balloons like this. Balloon A and balloon B. We blow the air in between them. They are kept a little bit far apart. And we are blowing the air using a straw in between them. As we said, they collide, they dash, like this, they dash. If they dash, so they collide, they dash, why should they? Can we explain by using that equation? Observe, when we blow air in between them, we are making the air to move with larger velocity there. Your velocity increased. So what happens according to that equation? P should decrease compared to other two sides of the balloon. Therefore, here pressure is more, here pressure is less. That pressure, larger pressure on both sides of the balloon will push it and those two balloons dash with each other. Dash with each other. So this is why they get dashed. Even for the ships also, when they are sailing parallel to each other, 
when they are sailing parallel to each other just like here in case of train they drag the water along with them the water velocity between two ships will become larger than the other sides outsides of the ships then that pressure of the ship as a pressure on the ship will make them to dash each other that again can be explained by using bernoulli's theorem with all these things in mind now we are all set to learn another idea just look at the board carefully say we said when we thought of loss of motion and all those things loss of motion and all those things what we said there's a friction is the friction possible only with solid surface and solid surface no it need not be so friction is also possible with the liquids also so if we imagine as say this long back in the tv a an ad used to come i told you most strongly uh, it's an ad for sas uh, a famous actually comedy actor actually comes to that advertisement i have forgotten in that he start pouring the sauce out of the bottle out of the bottle it will not come out easily why we want to see and if you observe if you imagine to pour water and honey we'll see the difference say if this is the beaker containing water so if you pour it it simply comes out but if you take the beaker or a container with honey this is with water this is with honey then what happens have you seen that honey flows here slightly protrudes and then say strictly speaking it happens like this observe the difference observe the difference here water continuously simply pass ah uh, that's what we are learning so so here it goes forward why it happens because of the friction between the two layers of the liquid or adjacent layers of the liquid sometimes many times the fluid or liquid any fluid is possible even for gases also it is possible they flow in layers what we call that type of flow as laminar flow laminar flow laminar means layer by layer structure laminar flow is there so because of that observe this type of thing happens and this laminar flow this type of shape difference in when you pour honey and water all those things comes because of the friction between the two layers of the fluids whether it is gas or liquid and that friction creates what is called as viscosity viscosity and this viscosity is what we want to learn now so it is just a frictional force between the layers of the liquid frictional force between the layers of the liquid because of which one layer slides over the other with a different velocity say i write down for the sake of clarity we do it now just observe we have two glass plates one glass plate another glass plate in on top of it and a liquid is kept in between this two liquid is kept in between this two somehow let's not bother how and how this top plate is made to move top plate is made to move bottom plate is kept constant then what happens because of the molecules liquid or fluid molecules touching the top glass plate they also dragged along with the glass plate so this starts moving 
this liquid layer, this is liquid or fluid layer, starts moving along with this, along with this, and below that, this next layer of the liquid moves slightly slower because there's a friction between these two layers due to the molecular interactions. And then after some time, what you see is this type of picture I'll show you. This type of picture. So as the plate moved like this, as the plate moved like this, what you get, what you see is first layer, which is in contact with the top one, will be slightly forward. Second one, third one, fourth one, like this. Fifth one, say fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, exactly at this edge, like this. This type of shape will be formed if you make the top glass plate to move, keeping bottom glass plate at rest. Why this happens? Observe, when glass plate at the bottom is at rest, this layer is not pulled anywhere. Therefore, this will be at rest. But as the top layer is moving, that is pulling the liquid along or fluid along with it, so that layer of the liquid moves forward. And below that, another layer is there. And there's a friction between them. That layer also moves. Strictly speaking, what I have written is not the correct diagram. To explain it, I have written. Strictly speaking, what we need to write, that I have written. But as we are moving it, the second, third layer are slightly lesser, like this. It goes on happening. If we imagine a fluid flowing in a pipe, what will happen now? We'll see. Say so this is a pipe now. Pipe wall there. This is pipe wall like this. Now a fluid flows through this. Because of the flow, because of this type of friction, top layers will move slowly or bottom layer will move slowly compared to middle rows. So the liquid in the middle row comes forward a little bit earlier and then like this. Like this, observe. The middle layer is having friction from two layers but not direct contact with the walls of the pipe. Therefore, that moves fast. That's why it is coming forward first. Then top layers. The layers which are in contact with the wall of the tube, they will not move. They are almost at rest. That's why they don't move. That's why the liquid starts coming out from the middle like this, out of the pipe. All this is happening because of viscosity. All this is happening because of viscosity. And now we define And that I will explain pressure coming a little later on. I will explain it later on. Prajal Kaudanya is asking me some, some other question or else we'll go through that. So anyhow, we think of that idea also relevant here. Say he's asking me, uh, it's like this. Say if you take, if you go to a, a, say a hotel or somewhere, there they will give you pot of coffee if you order the coffee, five star or something. They give you the cup. Say, if you send the waiter not to serve, you serve on your own, then you will face a problem. So if that jug is having a went out, then it is okay. And then once you pour it to a ceramic bowl or cup, you, you try to pour Say, if this is the cup with the handle, you try to pour the coffee out of this cup to the another cup. 
what will happen let's see what will happen when the cup is say made like this the coffee flows out instead of falling in why it is happening that's what professor kavlin is most surely asking it is because of different phenomena there in fact here two types of molecules are involved one liquid molecule one container molecule in fact that's what i said long back when i took different types of forces that appears in mechanics i told you one my teacher's question my what asked to me when i was in second standard i can remember you in once see this type of situation only i got that into my mind when i was teaching in svi so what he asked on that day my teacher the name ankapa in when i was in second standard he asked there all kids he came to us and he asked us if we dip our hand into water will water attach to our hand or not that is the question asked we don't know why he asked and all those things we may answer it or we don't know what we answered i have forgotten but he asked what happens when you dip hand into water whether water sticks to your hand or not ಸಣ್ಣ ಮಕ್ಕಳಾಗೆಲ್ಲ ಕೈ ಒದ್ದೆ ಆಗೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿರ್ಬೋದು ನಾವು ಆದ್ರೆ ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಯಾಕೆ ಕೈ ಒದ್ದೆ ಆಗ್ಬೇಕು ಯಾಕೆ ಇನ್ನ ಈಗ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಫೆದರ್ ಸೇ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಕ್ರೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸ್ವಿಮ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಕಮ್ ಔಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೆದರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ ವೈ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ವೈ ಅವರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಗೆಟ್ ವೆಟ್ and the same answer will come only for this cup whenever we have two types of molecule one liquid one solid there is force of attraction between solid molecules and liquid molecules that is two different type of molecules that type of force is called as adhesive force adhesive force the force between two different type of molecules are called as adhesive force and the force between two same two type of same type of molecules is called as cohesive force observe adhesive cohesive adhesive means between two different types of molecules just remember the word adhesive gum the name used for gum what is used to paste the two different surfaces paper or formica muscle, all those things that's why adhesives we call gums as adhesives they are attached to different types of things cohesive it is the force between force of attraction between two diff- similar type of molecules in fact in this example of pouring coffee out of a edgeless or tipless as a container to another is not so much successful and the coffee pours out of the cup not entering into the other cup why it is because as the cups do not have the edges say we can think of like this as the cups do not have edges as the liquid comes over here its molecules are attracted on to the surface its molecules are attracted on to the surface and then they start pouring it like this outside but if you have a cup with a tip there or edge like this cup with the edge then what will happen say as this liquid pours here it comes out and as it is down there it simply falls because there is a large gap between this surface of the container and this liquid and it will not pour it will not flow on the surface it simply flows into the other cup cups with the edges especially this happens with ceramic cups ceramic and steel cups without edges so that is the idea for uh, prajwal's question what we said is uh, say cohesive and adhesive now we think we'll come back to the 
discussed and we think of all those things again. But before that, now you know what is adhesive force and what is cohesive force. Adhesive forces means what? A force between two different type of molecules. For example, to remember, gum between one sheet of paper and another sheet of paper. So gum molecules are one. They will call molecules one. And one sheet of paper, one sheet of paper. They are different material. So paper, gum attaches them together. They are adhesive forces. And when we dip our hand to water, what was my teacher asked me in 1972 when I was in second standard, when we dip our hand to the water, water molecules attracted by our skin molecules, they get attached because of adhesive. If you put oil on your skin and say oil on your hand and rub it completely, spread it on your hand and dip it into water, then water sticking becomes very less. Why? That we learn in the due course of this chapter, mostly in this week only, within two or three days, mostly tomorrow or day after tomorrow, we'll come back to that, we'll come out to that idea. Why it will not stick to the oily surface? So, Prajwal Kavandini is saying polar and non polar, not like that. There's something different. We'll see what is that. And these are the ideas. Now, we'll proceed on to viscosity. Again, there we define what is called as coefficient of viscosity. Coefficient of viscosity. I'm having 10 more minutes to go most probably. So we'll think of what we need to learn now. Just observe. <coughs> Say it's like this. We want to learn what is called as coefficient of viscosity. Coefficient of viscosity. What it is usually denoted by Eta. Eta means say write like an but give a stylish hair styling. That means yen he barre. So stylish the buff cut in our money like that is called as eta. Question of viscosity. How to define that's what we want to learn now. Observe. Say this is the glass bed what we have taken at rest. And another glass plate is here. And now the liquid shape is like this. If you can remember sharing stress and sharing strain, now you'll get it. Originally, this was like this, rectangle. Once the top plate start moving, it's not a rectangle. And this height is L. And this distance is X. L versus X. Observe. X on top, that is the change in the shape. L is the distance between them. And observe, as the top plate moves, X goes on changing. X goes on changing. Therefore, shearing strain, what you have written, can you remember? Shearing strain is X by H or theta, what we have written there. X by H by R or theta, what we have written. If this is taken as theta. Now x is changing with respect to time. That's why what we define, instead of sharing strain, we write strain rate. Uh, yeah, Swas is asking me what is the unit of viscosity. We will learn it after learning the expression. You are the one who is going to explain it now. Okay, we'll just learn this. Stra sharing strain is x by h equals theta. Now, here as the x is continuously changing, that's why we call strain rate. Instead of calling sharing strain, we call it a strain rate because strain is changing. How, how to write it? Just observe, say x by h whole divided by t because x is changing with respect to time. Therefore, say we can write x by t whole divided by h. X by T is the velocity, speed by H, speed by H. This is what we call a strain rate. 
But here, instead of H, we have taken L. Therefore, I have to write V by L. V by L. Strain rate. Strain rate means with which speed strain is changing. That is the shape changing. How much it is changing per unit time. Strain rate is defined as, say, change of rate of change of strain. Rate of change of strain means how much that ratio x by h changes per unit time. That is V by L. Therefore, quotient of viscosity, viscosity can be defined now. Shearing modulus or rigidity modulus we can define. That itself is called as quotient of viscosity. How to define? F by A by theta. For that we will define strain rate. F by A into V by L or FL by AV. This is what we call as quotient of viscosity. Strain, say, it is defined as ratio of the shearing strain, shearing stress, F by A, per unit strain rate. Let the points, V theta is now V by L, strain rate. So with this, now, we define once again quotient of viscosity is defined as the F by A by strain rate. You can define it. F by A is the force per unit area, Pascal second unit. We'll see, Prajwal, whether it's right or not. Definitely it should be Pascal second. So we'll see. So this quotient of viscosity is defined as shearing stress to the strain rate ratio. Defined as ratio of shearing stress to the strain rate ratio. So that is the thing. And what is the unit? Now we check. Force, you just write down all the units here and just, just think of. Force Newton, meter, meter square, meter per second. And one meter goes there, therefore Newton per meter square per second. So per meter square is Pascal, Pascal per unit time, Pascal per second. That's nice. Prajwal said that Pascal per second is the quotient of viscosity unit. Sometimes we also spice, but nowadays we left that name. We simply say Newton per meter square, that is Pascal per second, Pascal per second. That is about viscosity. And usually in the competitive examinations, a question arises, usually this. What happens as the temperature of the liquid and gas increases to increases for their quotient of viscosity? What happens to their quotient of viscosity? as the temperature of liquid and gas increases. For that, we have to say, observe, you know, once liquid water is heated, it can easily flow compared to initial when it is cold. Therefore, quotient of viscosity for liquid decreases as temperature increases as temperature increases. Same thing for gases. Quotient of viscosity for gas, here there's a problem. Between the layers of the gas, when, when they are flowing, as the temperature increases, molecules move more and more randomly and they hinder the motion of the adjacent layers. Because of that, as temperature increases, quotient of viscosity of the gases increases because of the more and more mixing of the particles in the layer there's more collision between the layers of the molecules and thereby more friction rises and because of more and more collision because of that more friction therefore quotient of viscosity for gas increases as temperature increases quotient of viscosity for liquid decreases as temperature that's why when you pour the liquid, say for example, coconut, you take coconut oil. Nowadays, because of the chilling weather, you know, 
coconut oil becomes somewhat solid like semi solid you cannot pour it so easily but if you keep it with the hot water surrounding it then it becomes comfortable transparent liquid then you can throw it easily that means when it is somewhat semi solid white color solid it will not flow so easily because of this idea temperature is less so this cost increases it cannot flow so easily but once you increase the temperature of coconut oil the viscosity becomes less as we said here and it flows more easily like that. so these are the ideas regarding the viscosity now we need to learn many ideas regarding this so here we learn before concluding this session so we have one only fifth uh, say 45 seconds to go so what we do let's not proceed with the other things now but just recap it what we learned till now we'll take up the next thing tomorrow but observe my dear friends now uh, it is like this from tomorrow or day after tomorrow you are supposed to come over here illige banbidi makkala ellaru yakandre ga colleges are opening everything is normal but i have put a message there for you also i will put that when to come also that's very important now something everything is normal you can come with masks and sanitizers okay uh, say so with this idea